Thank you all so much for joining us today. I'm excited to chat with you a little bit about the Ignite program happening this summer. So my name is Kelsey. I am the associate director responsible for all Stanford Ignite programs at the GSB. Um, I've been doing Ignite for almost eight years now. So uh, this is with lots of experience with this, and this is what I love to love to do. I'm joined today by my colleague Jia Ying, who is the program manager. So the two of us together will be kind of your program team for the summer. The other portion of the program staff is our faculty director, Yossi Feinberg. So he is a professor of economics and management here at Stanford GSB. He's been running Ignite for longer than I have and is responsible for putting together the curriculum and overseeing the academic experience of the Ignite program. So you'll get to know all three of us pretty well throughout the program if you do wind up joining us here this summer. Quick overview, um, IGNITE is designed to be a rigorous academic program. So our goal is to teach you the fundamentals of business and sort of those core like academic skills required for business, as well as the more practical aspects of developing innovative ventures. Uh, to achieve that goal, we'll have a dozen of the most senior and experienced Stanford Graduate School business professors. Um, all of the faculty pictured below typically teach in our Ignite programs, and actually three out of four of those professors have either are currently or formerly um, deans at the business school. So we're really fortunate to get some of the top tier MBA faculty teaching in our program. The content in Ignite will all be tailored to entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs. So typically the content, the session titles will be things that are more general, like accounting or marketing, but in that session, you'll really focus on the aspects of accounting that are um, important for entrepreneurs or the aspects of marketing that are critical for growing your venture. Our academic instruction is really divided into two general categories. One are the core business skills, things like marketing and operations and strategy. Um, and then we also have a pool of applied skills like public speaking and negotiation. The philosophy is that you kind of need both of these things to really be successful as a founder or entrepreneur. And honestly, to be successful in whatever you do in the business world, even if after Stanford Ignite, you decide, you know, maybe the founder life entrepreneurship, not for me, that's still okay. Our goal is that you'll be able to get useful tools and skills that you'll be able to take into whatever you do with your career. Um, in addition to these <clears throat> general topics that we'll talk about through the lens of entrepreneurship. We'll also have a few classes that are really dedicated to innovation and entrepreneurship, such as design thinking and new product idea generation. In addition to the classroom instruction time, you'll also have a team venture project. The goal of the project is to help you apply what you're learning in the classroom and these more kind of academic um, concepts to the real world application of a startup or venture project. So your venture project will function a little bit like sort of a mock startup that you'll work on from the start, ideating and developing your core kind of venture concept to uh, creating a business model, doing user interviews and marketing research. And at the end of the program, it will culminate in a pitch to a panel of venture capitalists and entrepreneurs who will give you feedback on your robust developed business idea. So we have project guidance in a number of ways to help sort of support this venture project and make sure that it's coupling well with the academic classroom time. Um, in addition to having this project, you'll have check-ins with Yossi where he will work with each team individually to provide feedback and guidance as you grow your project. And we'll have a structured set of assignments to help kind of keep you on track and give guidance as to how you should be developing this um, venture. We'll also bring in a number of collaborators from outside of GSB. We have guest speakers, um, typically successful entrepreneurs or folks who have unique um, experience with entrepreneurship, such as an IP lawyer. We'll also bring in panelists, both for an elevator pitch in the middle of the program and then a final panel at the end. And then each team will be paired with a mentor who will support the team project from 
more of an outside industry perspective. Um, it's worth noting here that that final presentation at the end of the program, while you are pitching to a panel of VCs and it's designed to be very similar to the experience of pitching for funding, there isn't actually an opportunity for funding within Ignite. That's kind of part of the whole setup is that this is purely academic. So we'll make sure that you get plenty of feedback from panelists and feedback about the venture and kind of your presentation, all of that but there's not an opportunity for your startup to get funding through Ignite. The program benefits that we hope that you walk away with are that you learn sort of the language of business, especially if you're coming from a more, you know, more technical field or have been in academia for most of your life, that you'll walk away with some of those, the key vocab and just like terminology and understanding of general concepts that will help you thrive in any aspect of the business world. We also hope that you'll develop skills that will help you turn an idea into a successful venture. Whether you wind up working on an idea that is yours and that you're passionate about during Ignite or working on somebody else's project idea, we want you to leave with this sort of toolkit that you can use to do a mini Ignite on startup ideas or um, corporate projects that you have throughout your career. Um, we'll also help you improve your teamwork, leadership, and public speaking skills and sort of those softer interpersonal skills that are critical in um, in most aspects of life. And finally, um, we'll help you expand your network to include Ignite alumni in the Silicon Valley as well as around the world. We currently have a network of just about 3,000 Igniters spread um, around the globe, plenty in California, but plenty of folks pretty much everywhere. So that's a network that you'll get access to after you complete the Ignite program. Our past participants typically come from a range of backgrounds. We like to make sure we have a diverse cohort so that you're getting to meet people who are outside of sort of the normal sphere that you would typically experience either in your degree program or in your workplace. We have plenty of folks who come from these large companies, places like Google or Cisco, as well as folks coming from small businesses and people who are already active entrepreneurs and are, are working on a venture on their own. Um, this summer, we'll have a portion of the cohort from outside of Stanford, as well as a portion of the cohort from Stanford, so from degree programs and postdoc positions around campus. We typically have a mix of uh, folks who are local to the Bay Area, as well as people who will travel in from outside of the state or outside of the country to participate in Ignite. Um, in general, we have a large number of advanced degrees in the program, but it's not a requirement that you have a, a graduate degree in order to participate. The program schedule this summer is officially June 23rd through July 17th. So those are our in-person dates. And during that time, you'll be in the classroom on weekdays from 9.40 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. I just want to raise the flag that this time does include some team meeting times, but not nearly enough for the kind of scope of the venture project. So in addition to classroom time, participants typically are in at least a couple hours of meetings with their venture project team per day or almost every day. In addition to the official program dates, we also have a pre-program kind of asynchronous portion that happens online. So that will start on May 22nd, and that's when the Venture Idea submission process will start. You'll start having access to all of the case studies and preparation materials. And you'll also get to start connecting with your fellow participants and sort of building up that network before you arrive on campus on June 23rd. The standard cost for the program is $14,950. Um, and thanks to a, a very generous subsidy from the Vice Provost for Graduate Education, we're able to offer the program to Stanford participants for um, a significantly reduced rate. So in order to qualify for that Stanford rate, you need to either be a current grad student or postdoc during the program dates, or have graduated during spring quarter or completed your postdoctoral appointment during spring quarter. Um, you, do, you are eligible for one quarter after you complete your you know, Stanford degree or your postdoc. And at the end of the program, you'll receive a certificate of participation. So we don't have grades or academic credit hours or like transferable 
credits. It's a it's a, a certificate that you're welcome to you know share on your LinkedIn and wherever you would like. Um, and this is subject to attendance standards and completion of all of the kind of project milestones and program requirements. For those of you who are coming from outside of Stanford, um, a few things to note. The most common type of visa is a tourist visa, but if you already have any type of visa um, approved and active, you're welcome to travel here on whatever visa works for you. I do wanna point out that because we don't have you know, grades or academic credits, and this is not a degree bearing program, you're not eligible for a student visa. Um, so I mean, Stanford is unfortunately unable to sponsor participants for visas. So just something to keep in mind. Um, the program tuition fee doesn't include meals or housing, except for a couple of celebratory events um, where we'll feed you. Other than that, you're on your own for housing, but you are eligible for on-campus housing, which for this summer should cost about 4,600 to live in a furnished studio apartment um, across the street from the Graduate School of Business. There are other options that are a little bit cheaper and some that are a little bit more expensive that you'll get access to if you are admitted. And then some people do choose to live off campus in Airbnbs or hotels, what have you. While you're on campus, you'll also have access to parking and gym and things like that for uh, sometimes for free, sometimes for an additional fee, depending on the specific amenity. So we do our best to make sure that we're providing kind of those key access to those key things while you're here on campus. We do try to keep this as a pretty selective program. So the exact program size depends on the applicant pool, but it's capped at 72 to ensure that you have a meaningful group interaction and that you know there aren't so many people that you're overwhelmed by like a class that you can never possibly meet, but also enough people that you know, you're getting to meet new people and uh, interact with people with different backgrounds and perspectives. Our application deadline this year is April 12th. So by that date, you'll need to have submitted your application that includes the online application form, a resume or CV upload, one recommendation that is submitted through our online portal, and then one online video interview, which is again submitted through an online portal. Um, the online application will include some short essays, and um, and everything else that's required is included in that online application form. For your recommendation, typically this can be whoever you would like. Um, somebody who can speak to your innovation skills or entrepreneurial ambitions is great. But if you're in a situation where you don't have somebody that necessarily knows that side of you, that's also okay. Um, we often see people do recommendations from either current or past managers. Uh, professors, advisors, that sort of thing. It can also come from a, a colleague or um, somebody who's a mentor in some capacity in your life who can speak to who you are as a professional, as a student, as a teammate. The online video interview is all recorded within our application system. So that is set up so that you can complete the interview whenever works best for you. Just make sure you do it by the deadline. Um, you'll be able to log in and do some practice and get comfortable with that platform before you have to actually record the final interview. So if you haven't already started your interview, I definitely recommend that you go in and practice, get comfortable, and then you can always come back days or weeks later to complete the final interview. And that is actually the conclusion of my presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop screen sharing now so that we can welcome our, um, our panelists. So I am joined today by two participants from a past Ignite program from this past summer. Um, so um, Bavika and Krista, Welcome, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, I'd like to start by having you introduce yourselves to the group. You can share your, your name, a little bit about your background and then what you're currently working on. Uh, Krista, we'll start with you. Sure, um, hello everyone. Thanks Kelsey for the opportunity. Um, my name is Krista, uh, I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia. 
So uh, last summer, 2023, I actually flew to Stanford. And when I was um, when I was in the program, I was actually working for Google Indonesia. So I was doing advertising sales at that time. However, after the program, I'm actually an entrepreneur now. Um, I co-founded my own startup. Um, it's called Spun. Uh, we're modernizing permit and visa creation in Asia using the AI and automation. Um, fun fact, it's actually the seed idea was actually coming from the class project that I had in Stanford. Um, but after that, I kind of uh, continue it on. And then I took it to like an early stage venture capital called Anther. Uh, we just got funded this January and now I'm a co-founder uh, and that's all thanks to Stanford. Um, over to you, Bavika. Thanks, Krista. Hey everyone, my name is Bhavika Mam, and I'm really excited to be here and meet all of you. Uh, I thank Kelsey and Jiang for inviting me here today. I participated in the Ignite of uh, 2023 uh, in the full-time cohort. And uh, because of Ignite, I've had the opportunity to be consulted by several startups. I'm currently working full-time in a leading biotech company, Kaijin, as a bioinformatics engineer. And uh, during Ignite, I was actually working uh, as a postdoctoral researcher in the Advanced Drug Delivery and Regenerative Biomaterials Lab at the Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine uh, at the Stanford School of Medicine. It's really nice to be here. And uh, uh, during Ignite, I was uh, working with one of my, one of the teams that I was working with was Oncocardia, which is a startup uh, which is based on AI for uh, AI, generative AI for discovering uh, cancer therapeutics. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be here and answer any questions you have. Thanks. Thank you both. Um, I'll ask a few more questions and then we're gonna open it up to questions from, from all of you, our, our attendees today. So if you do have a question that you'd like to ask, mm -hmm. you're welcome to type it into the chat or um, in a few minutes, we'll have um, we'll open it up for you to raise your hand and ask questions. Um, but first, panelists, I'd love to hear what advice you have on how to balance the demands of Ignite and either your career, mm -hmm. your, you know, degree program that you were working on at the same time. Uh, Bhavika, we'll start with you. Um, I think I think the best way to do it that it's I think it's good if we can. We can plan our schedule beforehand in advance can and so that we can reserve 30 minutes to one hour a day for any other kind of task because uh, Ignite is a pretty, pretty intense and demanding and pretty engaging schedule, especially if you if you are new to the business side of things. So there are a lot of in my experience, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of case cases that I had to study, and uh, I I think it was uh, it's good practice to study the case loads uh, case studies in advance. So understanding new concepts they also take some time, and uh, and also there sometimes we have some assignments and um and it also helps in thinking about the current team that you're assigned to. It helps that we think about what kind of uh, project we are immersed in. So from that point of view, it's pretty engaging. Uh, and the best advice I can have for anyone is that it's good to plan ahead and so that there's less of some parallel workload ongoing. And uh, hopefully you can have an understanding between you and your advisor or you and your boss. Thanks. Thank you. Krista, over to you. Yeah. I think there was a timely question because there was also um, a question from Brinali, if I'm not mistaken, in the chat um, asking about like, how do you balance if you're working full time? I was working full time at Google at that time and I was already working for like around four years. So it's kind of like already a mid-career break for me. Um, I talked to my manager that I actually wanted to do, do this and I want to immerse myself in this program for just like around one month. Um, finally, I take a sabbatical leave. Of course, you know, it's not that easy. You know, you've been working and then you have this rhythm of work. Um, actually, the first week I was still checking emails because there were like time difference. So basically, like um, my start of the day is like U.S. midnight. Uh, so that's basically I 
kind of try to handle it but that only happens for like one or two days <laughs> and then on the third day I was so exhausted because actually the first week is the most intense part I would say like the first week you have like so much reading and then you get accustomed to like um you know how to get around and then also like understanding like there's just so many readings, so many um, discussion going on that you have to be like engaged all the time. And it's kind of like taking a lot of energy. So it's hard if you kind of double job that with like a full time job. Um, so I guess like the first week was like really the hardest. But then on the second and the third, um, finally, my manager would understand that I'm actually in this program. So I finally took like around four weeks of leave. Um, and yeah, so and then like the class feels like super fast as well like after like this three four weeks you feel like it's very short so I would recommend to just like enjoy your time and just like really focus on this four weeks and try to be immersed in it because at the end I feel like it was really short and I wish I could get an extension uh, but yeah but how do I manage that it's basically just taking a sabbatical leave Okay, so one more question for you. Um, what advice do you have mm -hmm. for new participants that you wish you had had when you started? Krista, we'll start with you. Um, right. So I guess like what I wish I had done is basically more research um, because I was like um, from far away and then I, um, I just want to you know, get there and then just like start the program. But I wish I did more research, um, especially on three things, which are um, non-academic actually. The three things are like, the first one is on the logistics, on the accommodations. Um, there are a few options. I actually pick uh, EVGR because that's the one that is the closest one to campus. And I did not regret it. It's really nice. I could take naps in between classes, um, but there are other accommodation and uh, options that enable you to meet with other people. Let's say, for example, the dorm options. Um, the dorm itself is kind of pretty empty because a lot of Stanford students are going away um, for summer. So it's actually, there's a lot of options in the dorm as well. And then you can actually, if you're from somewhere else, you can easily meet friends there because there's like a common room where you can like get together, discuss tasks um, and whatnot. So I wish I could have done more research in the accommodation part. And then second, there are a lot of like events going on this summer, whether it is on campus or off campus. Uh, by the time that I knew it, actually it was too late or it's already full book, but there are a lot of like venture capital from Silicon Valley would uh, do some pop-up events somewhere. And then there's also a lot of concerts. I watched one concert in the Frost Amphitheater. There was this like, you know, like summer music thing that was pretty awesome. So I wish I, I would research more um, of those events so I get kind of like the full experience of living there. And yeah, I wish I also like travel more. So out of like the four weekends I've been in, I travel on the three weekends. I wish I travel on the all four. Um, I went to... The Muir Woods, I went to LA, I went to hike to Yosemite as well. So there are a lot of options to, to go around as well. Um, so yeah, do your research beforehand. I would recommend you, if you're not from Stanford, to actually connect uh, with someone who are from Stanford beforehand because they can really give you like the tips and tricks um, more than the internet can give you. So yeah. And Bhavika, um, how about you? Advice for new participants? Sure, thanks. Um, when when I got to know I'm um, I'm joining Ignite, I was really excited. So, I think one thing that I would want anyone else to, I would like it if others do is get to know their cohort. Every chance you get, because in between, uh, of course, we'll get to know them once we're picked in a team but apart from that uh, it's really nice to make meaningful connections with the rest of the cohort who may or may not be part of your team and uh, uh, and because we get to know a lot and we learn more about uh, more about uh, more more things about the business side of things or even just how they how they view a particular case or a problem or any something new that we may have learned so we get different perspectives um, the other thing is that uh, a lot of people, I, I mean, I, I personally advise that uh, we, it would be good to read our case studies in advance 
and uh, because the classes are just amazing and they become even more amazing if we um, if we actually study them beforehand and because there's a lot more of layers that we can uh, gain it's like uh, i feel like a case study is like a work of art like you 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 end up seeing it from a different perspective every every time you see it again and again and uh, the other thing is that ignite also gets gives great feedback and is like really well organized and um, one thing is that uh, apart from the learning that's part of the curriculum ignite is also about teamwork and uh, uh, one thing that happens is that uh, it's it's the technology is already there in the idea and it's about uh, going together as a team and developing the business model of things so uh, so we will have a great learning curve if we can actually hustle together and um, and we try to bring out the best in each one another as a team during the presentation and also during the team meetings because the product the final product of the business model is actually a function of uh, how much we are how much uh, how much we are in it together throughout the throughout the time of ignite as a team so uh, that's also a great experience to have and uh, there'll be a lot of strength because not only because of different perspectives but also because uh, we'll we'll encounter diversity and uh, so we'll be we'll be having we'll be exploring different strengths so like i can think like this is the best time to make use of this opportunity with a growth based mindset and the last thing i would uh, think of it suggest is to not be afraid to pivot if if an idea doesn't work out midway or nearly they are halfway through and uh, to share your concerns professionally with your teammates uh, communicate as well as with the uh, as well as with the ignite team thank you hey, well, thank you both i uh, would like to open it up to questions from everyone now so if you'd like to um raise you can use the raise hand icon and um, and unmute yourself and ask a question, or if you'd prefer, you're welcome to type the question into the chat and um, Jiang will read it out. Um, any tips on um, how to prep for the interview questions? I think that's the one that I'm most nervous about. Um, I was told by some Stanford lead participants that, you know, the person or the recording just continues talking while you formulate your question. Is that true? Uh, any, any tips y'all can give us on like how to prep for that bit would be helpful. I can tell you from the, um, staff administrator side as the person who set up the interview portal, um, we have, so the, definitely do the practice questions a few times. It's the exact same format as the interview questions, just different questions. Like I think one of the practice questions is what is your favorite movie and why? Obviously we will not be asking you that to judge whether you should join Ignite, uh, but the like all the timings will be the same. So basically for each question, you'll see um, staff, a video of staff like reading the question aloud and you'll have like the text of the question that you can review. Then that will all go quiet and you have, I believe it's 60 seconds. It might, I believe it's 60 seconds uh, of just like quiet to kind of formulate your thoughts. You're welcome to jot down notes, what have you. And then you'll have, and then the clock will start and you'll have two minutes to record your response. So you do have a little bit of quiet time to gather your thoughts. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, Muhammad, let's hear your question. Thank you very much for such an amazing presentation. So I have one question that if some visiting scholars or visiting postdocs are at a Stanford for two or three years in collaboration with the European Union or something like that, so are they eligible also for Stanford affiliated rates? 
so with the visiting affiliation, it can get a little tricky. If you if your appointment, postdoctoral appointment is managed by the Office of Postdoctoral Affairs, then you are eligible for the reduced rate. Um, if it's a staff affiliation, then it's not. I know that sometimes postdocs get converted to like to staff roles like research scientists for mm -hmm. a number of reasons, even though the role is still basically the same as the postdoc work that does unfortunately mess up your eligibility. So a good way to check is also if you search yourself in like Stanford Who or Stanford Profiles, if you show up as postdoctoral researcher, you are all set. If you show up as staff, um, probably not. And if you're something else, we can always um, look into, Jay Ying and I can look into it individually. Um, like if you email us, we can look up your exact situation. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Abrar? Hey, thanks so much. Um, what's the feedback that you guys have gotten in terms of people who are participating if their actual, like their venture submission is selected versus if it isn't? So then they're like working on a team on someone else's venture, like have people still found it to be like a very helpful program, um, even if they're not kind of working on their own venture during it? Panelists, let me let you weigh in what your experience was with that. Um, so we we do have someone who is, uh, so Abra, can I clarify our questions first? So are you saying that, um, someone already has like a venture idea and then like end up not working on that idea because they are working on somebody else's uh, idea in the class. Is that so? Yeah. Well, my understanding is like you, it's maybe I, maybe I missed this, but so, because the ultimate, like what you end up working on as a group in the class, it may not be your mm -hmm. venture, it may be somebody else's, right? Based on like which ones get selected for working yeah. on. Is that right? Correct. That's correct. So, so we do, we do have a case in our class uh, that somebody already had a venture idea. Actually, it's a running, it's a running idea, like they already got funded or something. And then he actually submitted it into the idea pool in which after that uh, gets voted by the class, but the idea doesn't get through. So then he ends up joining another team's um, idea, another team's class project. Um, in the program, he actually is doing double jobs. So he's actually doing the program and he's also still working on their, uh, and on his startups. But I think I could not speak for him, but like I've um, informally chatted with him. He said that it's still a very meaningful program as he learns something else on like a very safe environment that doesn't really like contain his idea. Um, so I guess it will still be helpful, even though you are working on somebody else, because you kind of really learn the fundamentals and in a very safe environment while he is still, he still have time to actually, you know, consult his idea to the professors, consult his ideas to the cohort. So he still find it meaningful, um, on both ways. Got it. And so just, could you, could you clarify one more time how it works then? So like, if you apply and get into the program you then submit an idea, like everybody submits an idea to the idea pool mm -hmm. and that um, some number of those get selected to get work done by the different um, people in the group. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Kelsey, we'll, you want to jump in? Yeah, we'll form the teams based on participant preference. So that, um, that pre-program period that starts in May that I mentioned in the slides, that's primarily idea submission process. So you'll have an opportunity to submit an idea. Typically with a group of 72, we'll get 40 to 50 ideas submitted. And then that gets narrowed down. Uh, people, everybody reviews everyone's ideas. That gets narrowed down a little bit. And then on the first day of the program, a smaller group of like these, the top ranked ideas will get to um, do a little pitch, have some more kind of mingling, really give everybody opportunity to talk with the idea generator about what their idea is and figure uh -huh. out what team they want to be on. And then we form the teams based on participant preferences. So at the end, we'll wind up with uh, those 40 to 50 ideas get narrowed down to 12 venture project teams. Got it. Um, so a number of people submit an idea and don't wind up getting to work on it. They're instead working on an idea that one of their venture teammates submitted. And so are these usually ideas people are already like coming in with where they have a co-founder and like they want to build in more 
or are these usually like to like brand new ideas that they would work on just for this program? Um, both are super common. I have seen ideas submitted where the person like will straight up say, I was walking my dog the other day and this occurred to me. I'd like to yeah. explore this as an Ignite project. Um, and then there are like, we'll have PhD students that will submit an idea that's based off of years of, you know, intensive research. Um, we'll have people submit like an active company that they have already founded and are working on with a team outside of Ignite as a venture project idea. So it can be anywhere in that spectrum. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I can share a bit as well, because I think there was a question about like how thought out are the ideas, like I'm an idea generator myself. And um, to be honest with you, I was like, when when I need to create the idea, it was like probably just around 10 minutes because I was just thinking of something. And then, you know, like I just write it down. And then I feel like don't be afraid if you have like these ideas, just write it down. Because in the end, like what's more important is like when you develop the ideas in the class and then you fill it in with like your, you know, your business models with like how you can progress um, kind of like the idea into something more tangible rather than like the start of the idea itself. Um, in the idea generation itself, you need to think of like something creative, something new so that, you know, like your um, and then you also need to pitch it to your classmates. So pitching is also another part of it, like how you can convince people to get on on your idea um, of course the more advanced um, idea will get like some they already have like some videos they would ha have some pdf proposal it gets more interesting um, but yeah like don't be afraid to submit any types of ideas in any levels i i want to say that uh, i was an idea generator myself and what in my experience uh, even if someone's idea like for example if for example, if my idea doesn't get selected, what happens is that uh, we might have we might have an inclination towards another idea of a similar theme or a theme close enough, and and that might get selected. So even if you don't work exactly on your own idea, you are working on a theme that more or less resonates with you or might align with you, and in the end, it's not as much about the the details of the technology as much as it as much as it is about developing the business model and that includes different facets of the model and also getting feedback uh, from experts in every aspect of that model and also giving uh, giving elevator pitches to professionals in the field so there's a lot of uh, parallel other kinds of training that's happening that will eventually, I that I thought that would eventually prepare me for going back to my own idea. Got it. Yeah, thanks. That's that that's super helpful. Um, Joanna, let's go to you next. Thanks. Um, hi everybody. Um, I have a. I'm just wondering in the pre program, is there a way that you can get connected to other? to your peer group based on um, everybody's interest like for example like if somebody you know is in into healthcare or well-being or something yeah. and then can can you connect us beforehand so that we can exchange ideas and know how to you know like even um, I guess improve the way we pitch it um, by the time we get there yeah so You'll that pre-program phase, um, you'll get added to the online classroom, NovoEd, which is where all of the materials, schedules, you know, information packets, all that kind of stuff is there. You'll also get added to a Slack workspace. It's just for our group. Right. And we'll have everybody introduce themselves in that. So that is kind of the first opportunity to learn a little bit about your fellow participants. And then we make sure that we have that space available for you to connect with. Um, other folks who maybe are sharing that they have interests that are similar to yours. Um, right. We'll also do a pre-program um, networking activity we call rapid bonding to help kind of kickstart some of those connections. Oh, perfect. And then just a follow, a quick follow. Is it okay to bring family? Like do people go with families or is that not done? Uh, people do sometimes bring like, like for traveling into Stanford, um, people yeah. do sometimes have their families travel with them as well. Um, you aren't, if you do have a spouse, kids, whoever that are also in town with you, you can't bring them with you to class sessions. 
um, we we aren't allowed to have any outside good for you guys visitors. yeah okay yeah for sure all right perfect but they're allowed you know they're allowed if you get off-campus housing they're you know it's for, fine yeah off-campus yeah. housing for sure there is one opportunity for on-campus housing with a significant other I'm not gonna lie it's pretty expensive I would recommend if you're bringing anyone other than you um, you consider like an Airbnb or something like that okay thank you uh, Sikun. Hi, uh, I have a want to ask a question about the type of uh, ideas uh, we can work on. So, uh, is it a good idea to work on like a deep deep tech um, idea where you know uh, maybe the technologies are 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 not that uh, mature enough? Because I guess it's not a good idea to 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 work on you know science uh, like improve on part of science doing like. Uh, a, a, a month period is is mainly about develop the business. So, um, and if the te technology itself is is not mature enough, then I guess it won't be a good idea to work on. It's up to you, and you're probably the best judge of the specific technology. Um, you are correct that for Ignite, we're focused on the business side. So you're not required to have like a functioning prototype or a minimum viable product, anything like that. The things that you'll be working on in Ignite are like your business model and um, financials, that kind of thing. Uh, if if it's like a total moonshot technology that is you know decades away from existing, probably that's not a good call for the purposes of this program. It will be harder to really wrap your head around that for a venture. Um, but you know, if the if there still is a little if there still is some tech in development for this project, um, that's that's fine. And your advisors and things would be able to kind of help you figure out how to craft a pitch and a business model around a technology that isn't a hundred percent viable yet. But uh, we, we we shouldn't spend time like, for example, developing any technology during the during the program, right? It's about uh, developing the business plan around a technology, for example, if it is. Yeah, typically, uh, typically, no, you're, you're correct that um, you're not, you're just not going to have enough time in the three and a half weeks that we're on campus to do a lot of like work in a lab building technology or anything like that. Got it. Thanks. Uh, Golda. Hi, thanks for all the information. Um, the topic on ideas is very popular. Um, so my question is similar about prototyping. So there's no um, time for prototyping. My other question was, um, would you get um, like industry mentors or industry support um, while you're doing the business model for your idea? Sure. So mentors, I usually try to pair everyone with a mentor that is in a similar or relevant industry to the team project. I can't promise that you'll get an industry mentor just because, you know, we sometimes have ideas that just don't, we don't have a mentor in our pool that really matches. In that case, you would get paired with someone who has a lot of experience in entrepreneurship or who works often as like an advisor for a wide range of startups. So they would be able to advise still on, you know, broader industry things and would likely have connections that they might have your specific industry. So we do our best. Okay, cool. And one last question. Um, what's the policy around like having to miss any days um, if, if there's a particular policy? Sure, there's, um, I think that technically our policy is two sessions. Realistically, um, that's, that's not strictly enforced at all. Um, the more you can be in class, the better. Uh, we hopefully you're able to attend every class session, but you know it's it's the summer. People have weddings that they need to travel for. Um, people will have to miss two or three days to present at a conference. People get sick. Like these things happen. So as long as you're attending the majority of class sessions and aren't just like not showing up for unknown reasons, um, and are continuing to be active on your venture team. Um, some absences are fine. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I could jump in as well in terms of like the mentor. <clears throat> um, just want to share that 
Uh, my mentor was actually not um, on the industry that I was working on during the class project. I was doing something to do with AI. Um, but then my mentor was like a managing partner of like one of these VC firm. And fun fact, like later after the program, actually uh, this person connects me to Anther Indonesia. And then like, that's where I get funded. So I guess like it's really great array of mentors that actually Stanford has. Uh, and in terms of like the industry people that you need, you can actually find it in your cohort itself. So um, within like my class project, uh, I was also looking for someone who understand about AI and then somebody was actually working on that on their postdoc. So then, you know, like we recruited and then um, we get connected and then we build this class project together. So, you know, um, I think we might've lost Krista, but um, she's right that yeah, usually the the mentors will have sort of additional um, help, even if it's not directly project related. And typically, if there's an aspect of your venture that is less familiar to you, somebody else in the program will want to be on that team. Uh, Jia Ying, do you have some questions for us? Yeah, uh, you actually answered most of my questions. Um, I had a couple of people asking whether they can attend week one, two, three only, but skip week four. I mean, I don't recommend it. If it's something that you absolutely need, like there's no way you can be at any part of week four, that is probably still enough. As long as, as I mentioned before, you're actively participating on your venture project, we can make an exception to the requirement to be at final panels. Um, it is also worth noting that in the, that while it's primarily final panels. We do sometimes have guest speakers or like a faculty session could be scheduled in that fourth week as well. Um, so if you're able to, um, you sh if that's if that's your situation, you should email us with a little bit more context and we can discuss and help work out a plan that would work for you. Thank you. Uh, another question is about time commitment. Um, is it safe to say that with four time course hours, the evenings and weekends will also be busy with um, team meetings. Um, panelists, uh, what was your experience with that? I think initially, well, initially, oh, I, initially maybe weekends could be used to prepare for case studies in advance because initially we have weeks uh, with a lot of um, lot of business topics and ideas are introduced and it's it's a good practice I found that it was a good practice to study the cases during the weekend so that the workload for the evening the weekday evening reduced and uh, but as the but as but as ignite progresses and uh the, the team becomes more and more, the team meetings become more and more intense. The weekends could be used for, uh, uh, for some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, business model preparation so the there are different aspects there were different aspects to preparing the business model and it gets divided within team members so it often happens that we would we would say that you know we're gonna we're gonna finish this part of our business model and we'll be we'll we get back with each other on monday so that's how we would often use our weekends or maybe sometimes a weekend could be used for rehearsal during the final week yeah. Um, sorry, I got disconnected just now. I guess on the weekend topic, um, I was actually having a different experience because I went out every weekend to travel, but definitely like, um, you know, on, on one of the weekends, like let's say like Saturday uh, would have plot some time to actually read the reading so that we can be more engaged in the class project because it is a lot of reading, so you need to be aware of that. And then also, um, as the Ignite progresses, as Buffika mentioned, uh, the team meeting gets more intense. So you just have to make sure that your schedule is um, is okay with 
all other classmates to actually meet on some days because sometimes they also have work during weekdays if they are like a postdoc. So then you need to sacrifice at least like one weekend to meet them to be able to actually have everyone sit down together and discuss the class project. So um, I guess it is manageable still though. And on the 4th of July, it's actually a holiday. So I guess, um, yeah, of course, it will still take into account the public holidays. Yes. Um, so this year, 4th of July is a Thursday. So we'll give you that Thursday and Friday off. Since people often try to travel home to be with family or celebrate and um, what have you. Uh, Ping Yu. Hey, thank you. Uh, I have a general question about the admission criteria. Uh, I'm curious, what's the top um, metrics or uh, qualities that you're looking for from the candidates? And a more general question for the uh, panelists is, uh, what do you think, uh, what do you think your admission was uh, successful and uh, what do you think the uh, reviewer panel valued the most? Um, so I can share the um, some of the key things that the admissions committee looks for are um, really drive in um, entrepreneurship is definitely important. You know, we're looking for people who have the really specific need for Ignite. So being very clear about why why you would benefit from Ignite and why right now is the right time in your career or education for you to do Ignite is definitely valuable. Um, if you have a venture idea, you're welcome to outline it in your application, but you are not required to have a venture idea to do Ignite. That's totally fine. Um, whatever it is that you are working on, though, the committee is looking for, you know, passion around whatever your career, your startup idea, whatever it is. So it's that like passion and drive in an innovation space is probably the most important thing. Panelists, I'll let you weigh in if you'd like on um, the second half of that question. Um, thank you, Pingyu. So your question was more into like the cohort, the admitted cohort, or was the review panel? Uh, it was from the re review panel. The, the, pa the review panel, so the one who uh, scores your ideas mm -hmm. at the end? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Mm. Um, the review panels, they are consist of like actual theses from Silicon Valley. So um, it really varies, I would say, like some were really like nice and like directive and then they support your idea. Some are really ruthless and just like cares about the numbers. They like kind of drill you down on like whether this is a viable business idea. So I guess it's good to have like that diversity because that also like you know like mirrors what happens in the VC world uh, there are some VC who looks like they understand your ideas some are actually entrepreneurs before so they understand your struggle some are just like hardcore numbers but then also like what you will find in the course is how VC thinks and like how they do the calculation and like what they expect from your business plan so I guess that's really helpful so then when you are actually on the review panel, you know, like where you should, you know, drive the conversation. So yeah, it was really good. Cool, thank you. Yeah, Bhavika? Yeah, I agree with what Krista has to say. We, like during Ignite, we were taught how to, how to, how to drive the conversation with the VCs. And we were also taught how to, um, how, how to highlight certain aspects of a business model that we wanted to project to the VCs and how to work, how to, how to, how to be cohesive as a team in front of a VC, because ultimately the VC wants to fund you as a team for that purpose, for that, for the Ignite purpose of the uh, program. And uh, uh, yeah, the VCs were, the VCs asked, uh, uh, they the VCs asked a different like an array of questions, but in the end they just wanted to they just wanted to be sure that their investment in you would be in in the idea in 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 what you project would be worthwhile. Awesome! Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. So I think we're we're just about out of time. So I think we'll wrap up at this point. 
Um, if you do have any questions that didn't quite get answered or if any additional questions come up, please do feel free to reach out. You can send us an email and we'll be happy to um, help support you in any way that we can. Um, to close out, I'd like to go back to the panelists one more time. Uh, Bhavika, Krista, do either of you have anything else that you'd like to add or share any closing thoughts? I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm excited that you guys are applying for Ignite and it was one of the best times in my professional life. And uh, I think I took a lot from it. And these are connections and people I would still like to be in, like maintain connections with and uh, be in touch with. I'm I'm really happy I joined. Ign I I had the chance to be join uh, to join to join Ignite. Thank you. Yeah, I would say um, the same feeling. Um, I would say as far as like uh, Ignite actually changed my life because mm -hmm. I've made the career jump into entrepreneurship now and I kind of become more confident because of um because of the Ignite program and apart from that I meet people like Bavika people like you know like other 72 participants from 25 different countries um during last summer and that that was really beautiful um so it was like a really great time to make memorable time and also like getting the most knowledge out of like Stanford Business School. So yeah, thank you again, Jaying and Kelsey for this amazing program. And hopefully you guys all accept it as well. Well, thank you both so much. I really appreciate you joining today to share your your perspectives. Um, I know that you provide a really valuable insight that I just, despite seeing plenty of Ignites, I'm not, I'm not part of. So thank you again for, for being here today. Um, and thank you to everybody else um, for joining. I uh, hope to see applications from many of you. It was great to kind of e-meet some faces and names, and I look forward to meeting many of you when we kick off in June. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your evening.